What's up, y'all? I got a banger from men only. Let's get straight into it. I'm single. I've been single for eight years. And I'm getting kind of lonely. But I'm not going to cave. I'm not. I'm not. It looks like you're in a cave. What are you talking about? Going on the dating apps. I believe that I can meet my tradey soulmate. <laughs> In the real world, I believe it. I be believe it. I believe it. I believe it. Keep believing it, I honey. I really miss like sleeping next to someone and cuddling and giving someone back tickles and asking someone, "Would you like a glass of water?" Fetch me a water. <laughs> you know, like. I miss caring about someone. I miss listening to their heartbeat and listening to them breathe and counting their freckles. Like, I miss it. Mm -hmm. Fellas, let's love it when a woman tells her bop lore. She's a runner, she's a track star. Talking about what she done been through. Well, the thing is, it sounds like you had a shot with at least one guy, maybe even two, um, and you blew it. Either you picked bad men or you ruined a good opportunity with a good man. The thing is, there's a lot of really good guys out there. There's a lot of guys that are in the blue collar, you know, truck drivers, guys that work construction, guys that are out there getting their hands dirty and keeping the infrastructure of our society afloat. Those, there's a lot of good men out there. The thing is, a lot of you ladies want to get with men that are undateable. Most of the time, ladies, if he's good enough for you, he's good enough for a few. So if you think that he's just going to come in, meet all the criteria that you want a man to meet, and then another girl isn't going to see him as a suitable partner, you got to be out of your freaking mind. Stupid. Trust me, this guy is of, of a higher value. If he's able to beat your cheeks, I almost biggity bet you, you would let him date. And chat, let me know what you think on this take. This is a hot take for today. The only time a girl will let you beat the cheeks is if she sees that you could be a potential boyfriend. Guys, we, we don't really care about all that. We don't care. We, we're not looking for a potential girlfriend just to beat the cheeks. But women, if she's going to let you beat the cheeks, more than likely she's thought about you as maybe being a boyfriend in the future. Let me know if you agree with that, chat. But I think that's what it is. And that's why I think a lot of these women get burned is because they think, oh, these these guys could be my boyfriend. They let them beat the cheeks. And the thing is, you and every other girl's letting him beat the cheeks. So nothing special. I need to move to a different state. I just saw this guy that I blocked at the gym. He came up to me and spoke to me. It was so awkward. I like, tried to ignore him and keep my headphones on. I acted like, oh, I didn't have enough hands to take my headphones off because I was carrying a barbell pad, water bottle, and a weight. He grabbed it for me and was like, oh, I'll put that back for you, like my weight. He asked how I was doing like five times. He apologized for how it ended. And then he had the audacity to say to me, we'll do something soon. You're blocked! Good luck contacting me, so it was so awkward. I can't let that happen again, and I need to move. Cleveland, Ohio is too damn small. I hit legs, though, and this is my glute pump. For those of you... <laughs> That's the pump? Not seeing a lot of pump. Who even think that I edit my shit? This is directly taken on Snapchat. So fuck you, no. Nobody's not. asking if you edit it. That's not a, that's not much of a pump. Anybody that does that pose can look like they have a butt. And I in chat, what we call this in the industry is the nothing else to offer post. When a woman posts stuff like this online, thirst trapping, it's I have nothing else to offer except my butt. I just got a fatty. And then they wonder why do guys only want to have sex with me? What's wrong with that? Why don't guys want to wife me? Because you're marketing yourself as a 304. You're marketing your body so guys want to buy your body. Come on, dude. You guys let me know if I'm the crazy one. I blocked him because he went an entire day. Ah! He went an entire day without speaking to me. But I didn't block him while he was ghosting me. And mind you, I called him twice and I texted him twice. And he went that whole day without speaking to me. He texted me the next day at like 9 p.m and said sorry with some lame ass excuse. I emphasized the excuse by thumbs upping it and I still gave him a period of time to be mature and call me like a man. I think I waited until the next morning and then I blocked him. No, I didn't wait till the next morning. I gave him a few hours maybe though cause he DM'd me on Instagram the next morning. Real the thing is honey, you were just an option. You are our option the whole time. This guy, this 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 guy this entire, th entire time was thinking. How about no? He's like, you know what, but I'll give her a shot. Realizing that I had blocked him. Anywho, 
Am I the problem? Let me know what you think. I just think these men think that they can run circles around me and play games right in my fucking face. I don't even think the first one was the right analogy. And expect me sitting at home just fucking with a fucking phone call. No, sir. This isn't turning into something we're supposed to be. Bye. Let's be real. I mean, honey, you were just an option. And that's the bottom line. And the thing is, I added some new sounds for you guys. Um, that's the bottom line. You were just an option. You're getting treated how a lot of men get treated. It's not fun, is it? Getting treated, getting treated like an option. But I love that these modern women are having to wake up because a lot of the chads are giving them the medicine that they've been giving other men. And they're like, I had to block him. I had to do all of this. He, he wasn't he wasn't meeting my expectations. So you were just an option at the time and you were second or third string at best. You were second or third string at best. And then you ladies sit there and think, oh, if, if he's good enough, if I'm if he's good enough for me, I can't be the only girl that's or I'm probably the only girl that's looking at him. No, other women are looking at him in the same light. And the thing is, this is why I say. Guys, when you're younger, you got to have a roster because you got to go ahead. You got to go out there and figure out the game. You have to figure out the game, brother man. Because if you don't figure out the game, the game's going to figure you out. And the thing is, you'll get played like a fiddle. And that's the last thing you want to do is getting played out there in these streets, bro. It's crazy. It's crazy work. Way. Okay, I want to talk about something that went wrong on one of my dates with someone that I was excited about, Newport Boy, if you've been following my story. I've honestly just kind of lost interest in dating him, but I want to explain why I feel like maybe this will be a good learning lesson for some men who are out dating. And why aren't the lessons ever for them? <laughs> Why is it always for, why do we always need to learn? Why don't you ladies need to learn sometimes? Maybe give some insight into how women feel on first dates. I don't even know how him and I matched on Hinge, to be quite honest, because he lives in Newport Beach, but I was still open to it because obviously I'm just looking for the right guy. Newport Beach is only an hour and a half away from me. So if he ended up being like wonderful, it's really not that big of a deal. We chatted for a couple weeks. We did a lot of voice messaging back and forth, and I was so excited to go on a first date with him. He ended up driving out to me, which is like, again, an hour and a half drive, which I thought was really thoughtful and I did appreciate. Didn't like plan a date or anything because, you know, he was coming to my hood, which I totally understood. So I- Coming to your hood? Honey, you look like you live in the suburbs. Hood? Planned everything for the first date. Everything seemed pretty great. I really liked him. He was definitely handsome, attractive. And I feel like but. that same chemistry that we had with like the voice messages was still there. In this girl is a whole five. So let's let's really see the expectations that she has for this guy. Like, like where did he fall short? Person. The only thing I noticed in person that I feel like you really can't get over text messages or voice messages back and forth on the phone is that I felt like he really dominated the conversation in person, which I would have never known on voice messages because it's just like, you send one, they send one. So I didn't have that experience of what it was like to have a real like dynamic in-person conversation with him. And I kind of- This is why I always say, bro, when you're on a date with a chick, you need to do about 30% of the talking. She should be begging for you to share more. You should get her so interested in you by asking her so many questions that she's asking you questions. You know you got a chick bagged when she starts asking you questions, but it's the whole sales philosophy, and I have a background in sales. I did it for a decade. But 70% of the time, she needs to be talking. It's just like the prospect. They need to be talking, right? Ask her questions and ask her open-ended questions. And then th there's a good... Uh, Jamie Foxx does this in, in some interviews that he did. I think it was like Denzel Washington. But he goes, talk to me about... Boom. Talk to me about your hobby. Talk to me about what you do at work. Talk to me about your friend group. Talk to me about the last vacation you went on. Talk to me about your last relationship. When you say talk to me about, there's not like an... There's not like a, an... It's an open-ended question. It's not a closed-ended question. As opposed to you could ask, how long was your last relationship? That's a closed-ended question. She, she could go, four years. Talk to me. Talk to me about. Instead, you could say, "Talk to me about how long your last relationship was and what happened." That's like an open-ended question. She could talk for days on that. So more than likely, this guy's just dominating the conversation. Which to a woman, it puts across that he's chauvinistic, pompous, and narcissistic. Which she'll probably throw that word out there because that's a favorite buzzword. But you need to exude empathy, and empathy means understanding of other people's emotions. That's what you need to do. That's why I say seventy percent of the time the woman needs to be talking, and thirty percent of the time you need to be talking. Kind of felt like. He took over a lot. 
So I was paying attention to that, but that wasn't like enough of a red flag. I just didn't love it. We went to dinner, he paid for dinner, which was great. I always really appreciate when a guy pays for dinner. And then we had already had our first kiss. So when we were saying goodbye to each other at dinner, it was time for me to go home and time for him to go home. We were doing like a good night kiss, which was great. I was like all for it. And then he just got really handsy and was like putting his hands like in my shirt, <laughs> like caressing me up. Oh, he was going for gold. Boy, you, you can't be going that fast on the first date, bruh. Here and was like grabbing me from underneath, like at the bottom and like, it just was too much. What really bothered me about the situation was I had mentioned like, oh, it's time to go home. It's like 1130, it was almost midnight and it's our first date. Like, I'm not hooking up with you, sorry. And in my head, I was just like, I wanna get home. And he had mentioned a couple times like, oh, well, why don't I come over? Like we can cuddle, et cetera, et cetera. And I'm not an idiot, like not an idiot. No, you're not coming to my house. I barely know you. I've just met you for the first time. So you've never had a one night stand? Come on. And also this is our first date. So like, no, not interested. And he asked me three different times. Like answer is no, dude. It kind of like ruined my date experience for me. Cause for the most part I had a pretty good date. And then when he did that, I just felt like, I don't know, kind of violated. I just got very like, oh, okay, like good night. And we left it at that. He even sent me a text message saying something about almost exploding on his way home. I just feel like that's something <laughs> on a first date, like for me, the goal is to feel very safe and to feel like you're a gentleman and that you respect me. So the next morning, I just didn't know exactly how I felt about that date. And I didn't say anything to him. I just kept chatting with him and I was like, maybe he just had like too much wine to drink and he wasn't being himself. I gave him the benefit of the doubt. We talked for a little bit more and then he asked if I wanted to come down and drive to him in Newport, which to be honest, I was all for because he had mentioned it on our first date. And I was like, yeah, sure, like I'll drive down there. But then that kind of happened at the end of the night. And so I kind of felt uncomfortable driving to him. So I asked him like, okay, well, let me think about it. Like, what would we do? And he was like, oh, I don't know. Like you could come to my house. I'll make you dinner. And in my head, I'm just thinking like, this is our second date. Bro, if you're coming to the crib and somebody making dinner, somebody's cheeks are getting clapped. <laughs> <laughs> I'm clapping cheeks. It's gonna sound like this. It's gonna sound like a round of applause. Those cheeks are clapping. Wait, are, is somebody clapping in the background? <laughs> That's what it's gonna sound like. <laughs> date, I don't wanna come to your house. If we're in a relationship, I would love to do that. And I would love to have you make me dinner and I would love whatever would come after that. But we're like in the beginning phases of dating. So no. And that was pretty much like the final turnoff for me. I ended up telling him like, I don't feel comfortable coming down to you. And I did explain why. I kind of felt like his priorities were maybe hooking up. Duh. And even if that wasn't the case, I just didn't feel like he made me feel safe enough in an intimate to way to him. even want to get there with him, if that makes sense. I'm sharing this story because I feel like it is important for men to know that especially on the first, second, third date, like you should be actively making sure that you're making the woman feel safe and respected. I promise you like intimacy and all of those other things will follow, but it's not gonna happen if you make someone immediately feel like you're pressuring them. So that's why Newport guy didn't work out. And I honestly just lost interest. I'm in the market for a gentleman and that's what I want. It's time to, but what you're in the market for and what you're actually eligible for is completely different. I agree with her though. You make a girl feel safe, make her feel respected, make her feel heard. More than likely you guys can get, get the boogie on, you know what I mean? But if you don't, if you do a lot of the talking, dominate the conversation, it shows that you're not empathetic. It shows that you're not understanding. And that's really what women want, bro. Let me, let me just put you guys on game, dude. If you make her laugh and giggle, you can make her cheeks clap and jiggle. Okay, personality. Personality is a real big one, bro. If you don't have a good personality, it's going to be really hard for you to clap a lot of cheeks. Um, but to her point, if he would have just hush, hushed his mouth and asked some more open-ended questions, more than likely she would have felt respected and comfortable enough to go and hang out with this guy. The other thing he did wrong, which I'm not a huge fan of, is like getting really handsy in public. I, I don't really do all that. Now, we could kiss a little bit, cool, caress a little bit, but you always want to feel like you're pulling away 
So that way she wants to pull towards. But if you're always like pushing it, she's going to want to pull away. It's just human instinct, right? She's going to be like, well, why is he so on me? Where she, you want her to be the one on you. Um, now, if she comes over straight to the crib first from the jump, bro, you already know you're about to clap the cheeks. But if you're taking out her on a date, try to be as classy as you can. Uh, because women are attracted to class and women are attracted to gentlemen. Like she says, I want a gentleman. I want this. A gentleman is kind usually. He's empathetic. He's understanding. He's respectful. He's chivalrous. He's very confident. This guy, when he's trying to like do too much, it, it doesn't it doesn't exude a lot of confidence from him. Um, so yeah, he kind of dropped the ball on that one. So I, I got to give it up to her though. At least she, she was pretty based in her take. So so I did a thing today. I was really brave and I agreed to go on a date with a guy, which is something I haven't done for about 18 months just because of the whole cancer diagnosis. I haven't really felt well enough to go. So I agreed to meet this guy that I met on Bumble tonight. And Bro, I'm telling you, you want to meet a feminist? Get on Bumble. <laughs> because that's where they have to make the decision to message you. Like, bro, that's crazy work. Tinder's where you go for hookups. Hinge is maybe where you go for relationships. And Bumble's where you go to meet a feminist. Um, I turned up 10 minutes early. Um, took me ages to find something to wear because I put on so much weight. So I felt really anxious about going on the date. Anyway, I turned up early. I was sitting outside and I got a text to say that he wasn't coming. Um, Ooh. He was like, How about no? Can't do it. And I know it's really silly because I've had some really bad days before. But I just felt really let down. And it was really hard to agree to go on the date anyway. Because of all the, the stuff that I've been through, I was scared to be vulnerable with somebody. I haven't been in love for a really long time. And it's just this kind of behaviour on online dating that just kind of really puts you off. And I just want to meet somebody who's nice and enjoy my life with them. Um, it's just really hard when people treat you like this. It's just really shit. Welcome to being treated like a man. Chat, let me know if you agree with this. Men, we get treated like this all the time. We get treated like this from the ages of middle school to 30 years old. Women treat us like trash in the dating market. So it's so hard to have sympathy for women like this when it's like, honey, I've been going through this since I hit puberty. Try try going through that since you were 12. Try that. Since the day you got armpit hair, try going through this. Getting rejected constantly. Getting made fun of constantly. Not just by women, but men as well. At least with this, you're just getting made fun of by maybe one guy who's telling his friends. And you don't even know this guy, so who really cares? But then you get on TikTok and cry about it. It's so hard to have sympathy because what these women are going through, us as men went through when we were uh, a lot younger. Let me know if you agree, chat. And now I feel like I don't really want to go on any more dates. Oh, sorry, a bit emotional. So obviously I know you have to keep putting yourself out there, but it's really hard when you take knock after knock on these dating sites. And I have had some real horror stories to just want to put yourself out there again and to be vulnerable. And I really want to find someone to be vulnerable with and I want to find my person. But this has just been a real knock for me today. This is also something I hate. Like these older women talking about, I want to find my person. Honey, you're not Jasmine. He's not Aladdin. <laughs> like... You're not going to meet somebody that just like fits you like a puzzle piece. A relationship is about work. The thing is, everything is hard. Being in a relationship is hard. Being single is hard. Being alone is hard. All of it's hard. You just got to pick your heart. A relationship is where It's just like a friendship. You don't just meet somebody and you're like, oh my God, we're friends. I love you. You're just so great. We're just the best of friends. No. You guys took the time to get to know each other. You went through trials together more than likely. You did. You you shared experiences together. It's the same thing with this. You're not just going to go in there and click. This isn't a movie. You got to go out and get to know this person first. And you know what's really annoying is that a guy wouldn't treat somebody like this or a girl wouldn't treat somebody like that if they knew them. You wouldn't stand them up and give them ridiculously stupid excuses. You'd be respectful and try and make it up to them in some way at least it just i don't understand why people think that just because it's online dating that this is okay it's not okay um if you've ever had a bad date put your comments below because i think i am done i think it is time for married at first sight if she's wondering yoinks scooby married at first sight chat would you do the married at first sight i'm gonna keep it a buck there's no way loki does somebody want to beef jerky free 
Wait. Bree. Go to your place. Um, married at first sight. Bro, there is no way. I want to take this time to shout out to all the members of the channel. All the members. I'm going to pull some of you guys up just because I really appreciate you guys. And I feel like I don't give you guys enough freaking credit. So, uh, let me pull up the members here. See all members. So, shout out to all of you guys, man. Really do appreciate you guys. I think we have like 60 or 70 of you guys. We have people that have been here for 10 months, 4 months. So shout out to every single person here that's joined, upgraded, rejoined. I really do appreciate you guys. Seriously, I couldn't do it without you. The community is growing. Make sure you join the subreddit. The subreddit is reddit.com slash r slash Levi Nix. I will um, uh, usually get in here and react to stuff. It's just today I'm not going to because I shouted out the members. But get in here. We have 194 members. Shout out to you guys. See if we can get to 200 by the end of this episode. Uh, but I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. Loki, did you have a good time? He's like, I just want more food. Um, I really do appreciate you guys. I will see you guys on the next one, man. Peace.